Hi there, I'm Drew Banter, the world's number one English fluency guide, and it is a pleasure to welcome you to another advanced listening practice lesson. As always, if you are new to this channel or new to this series in particular, I recommend you go back and watch some of the previous videos in other series so you can get used to the sound of my voice. I know I do this little intro at the beginning of every one of these episodes, but I know we get a lot of new people that come and watch. So I'm just letting you know uh, this is where I speak more quickly and I try to blend my words even more. So I'll be speaking at faster than native speed when I go through this episode and uh, any of the other videos in this series. So if you'd like to understand me better and make sure you can really understand, uh, I guess, and enjoy what I'm saying, then do go back and watch some of the other videos first to get used to the sound of my voice. Anyway, if you're finished with that and you're ready to begin, let's begin. Well, uh, this is another kind of early morning session over here. I'm, I've woken up early and you can see I'm a little unkempt, unkempt. I believe that's spelled, I'm actually a pretty bad speller, but uh, U-N-K-E-M-P-T, I think. Well, I don't remember, but you can look it up, but it's something like that. <laughs> but it basically means that, you know, you're not looking like clean shaven and looking beautiful, so I apologize. But anyway, this is me just waking up, uh, and I thought I would make this video. It sounded like a pretty important issue. I recently received a... Uh, an email from a learner that was really excited about finding her passion. Uh, so I thought I'd make a video about that right now and kind of what I do and how I do what I do and, you know, why I do what I do, that kind of thing. Because I know a lot of people, uh, you know, there's a lot of information on the internet and in books and, you know, people are, you know, they're kind of looking for a thing to do with their lives, you know, whatever that happens to be. And uh, for me, I, th I think I was pretty lucky uh, that from a very early age, I was really interested in two things. And one of them was teaching, and I always just, you know, enjoy trying to help people learn things. You know, and another one of those was Japanese gardens, which is a very specific kind of thing. Um, but I wanted to talk about those things, how I got interested in them, and also about, you know, thinking about whatever your passions happen to be and how you can find, you know, whatever your, you know, I don't really like to talk about like having a particular purpose in life. Maybe some people believe that's the case. I don't really know if you have a particular purpose in life because I think maybe you could change and get into many different things and there might be more than one thing that you'd be interested in. And I think one of the reasons I believe this uh, is because I don't... <clears throat> I don't really believe in a soul mate. So maybe some people believe, and you could maybe like even disagree with me or agree with me, whatever, in the comments below. But the idea of a soul mate is someone who like, you know, you meet that person, like there's like one special person on the planet for you. And like, I just think like as people, maybe I'm, I don't know, maybe like more scientific about it or something like that. But a lot of people seem to find their soulmate in, like, the city they live in, which is, like, that's pretty amazing, don't you think? I mean, it seems like the odds would be maybe your soulmate would be in a completely different part of the world or something like that. So a lot of people seem to find their soulmate, like, at their university or at their, you know, church or at their whatever. So it happens to be usually, like, in close proximity to one another. And usually what, what happens is, is, like, people, you know, no matter where you are, you tend to find other people that, like... You know, you can find somebody that you can really love, and whether you choose to actually, like, you know, be with that person or not is a separate issue. Anyway, I don't want to get to, uh, talking too much about soulmates or whatever, but anyway, the, um, I just, I just don't, I don't like hearing, you know, when people think like, oh, I, like, I haven't found my purpose in life or something like that, and they're, they're kind of thinking that they have to do, like, one specific thing that, um, that they should be doing. Another idea about this is, uh, I remember listening to a, it was a podcast about business, and uh, these two different guys that had companies were talking about, you know, what they should do and like if they really enjoy the company and if they should continue working on it or if they should do something else. And one of the guys said, well, you know, I, I didn't want to sell my company because I wanted to keep building it. But kind of like the more important reason he said was because maybe this will be my best idea or something like that. And I thought like, wow, that's kind of horrible advice to give to people because especially when it comes to business, like if you think about where business ideas come from, like they shouldn't be coming from you. They should be coming from the market. And if that's true, then there are an infinite number of business ideas out there. So if you were thinking like, how can I help people? Then, you know, as an entrepreneur, 
really you don't have just like one business idea that you need to hold on to and you need to make sure you like do it for life or something like that because it's your best idea. It's just one idea of many. So even, you know, with me doing English Anyone, like it's just like a, a like a, a very serious problem that I think I could help solve and that's why I'm working on it. But I don't believe it would be my like best idea ever. You know, it's just learning how to help the market. Anyway, like thinking about all, I'm getting like really like off track here. But, you know, as I usually do, you can see I, like, go on a tangent. When you're talking about something to go on a tangent, T-A-N-G-E-N-T, -E to go on a tangent means you're, like, thinking about something else or you're talking about one thing and then you begin talking about something related to that. But now I have to get back on track to get back on track so anyway talking about your passion one of those things again like the reason I was talking about those like you know relationships and business and that kind of thing is because like you are a uh, an adaptable person and someone that maybe could be happy doing many different things and actually a lot of people have that problem where they can't really choose one particular thing they want to do and they're saying like well I've got so many different interests how do I know which one to choose and what I usually tell people is like, go ahead, try a couple of different things and see which one like you kind of subconsciously really want to really want to go to or really want to be doing the one you keep thinking about even when you're doing something else. So when I think about, you know, like like playing basketball, for instance, like I'm not really a great basketball player, but I think about it a lot. So it's something that like as a as a young child, I was a baseball player and I used to do that just because like kind of like in my community and my dad and like that situation, like kind of pushed me into baseball as opposed to basketball. Like I didn't have any friends that played basketball, like on a team, something like that. It just wasn't something like around. And so that's why you find usually like areas of people that happen to be doing a particular sport or have a particular culture or something because that's kind of what everybody else does. And if you, even if you may be like thinking about something in a different way, it's kind of difficult to get into that thing as it was for me with Japanese gardening. Here I'm living in Chicago as a young child um, and like it's not really like there were lots of Japanese gardens around or lots of Japanese people with their own gardens that teach me stuff, that kind of thing. But um, so one day I happened to go to a Japanese garden behind the Museum of Science and Industry. And if you if, if you live in Chicago, if you've ever been to Chicago, it has a lot of great museums. So on the south side of Chicago, right off of uh, the, the Lakeshore Drive and right off the lake, you can see the Museum of Science and Industry. And that museum behind it, you've got a really nice park and a, you know, a fairly decent Japanese garden. It's not great, and maybe they've redone it since I've been there, but this was on a fourth grade school trip. So I went there, and I think we had to do some kind of assignment, like draw the garden or do something like that. But I didn't do the assignment. I just sat there and just, like, enjoyed the garden for an hour. <laughs> and just, like, kind of walked around and sat in different places and was just like, wow, like, I didn't realize a place like this existed. It was a whole complete different design scheme uh, from what I was normally accustomed to for learning about gardens, that kind of thing. So I, I guess like, I mean, I'd always love gardening and I really thought about like, you know, it'd be cool to become a gardener or something like that just because I like plants and like the design of things, that kind of thing. But I'd never seen that kind of garden until that point. And so when I encountered that, when I met that, when I saw that for the first time, I was, I was blown away. To be blown away means like you're like, wow, like, like an explosion is in your face, that kind of thing. So I was blown away by that and I was really excited and I couldn't stop thinking about it. And so when you're thinking about your passion, like whatever your passion happens to be, it should be something that you're kind of always coming back to it in the same way that like I came to Japan to study Japanese gardening and then I left for a while. I went back to America, but I was still like pulled back here. So here I am like back in Japan again. And I imagine if I leave Japan in the future, I'm sure I will always have, you know, some kind of place out here, something that I'd like to be doing because something is just like calling you back. And it's just something you, you recognize it if you're paying attention and if you're open to that kind of thing. Now it might be difficult if you really have one of those traditional situations where your parents are saying like you have to be a doctor or a lawyer or whatever that thing happens to be. Uh, but most of the time, you know what it is you want to be doing. So figure out some way to do that and then just try, you know, a couple of different things until you figure out what it is you want to do. But most of the time, even if you have many different interests, there's usually one or two things that you're really, you're really excited about. And if you don't have that yet, it's like maybe you don't have like the right combination of things or something like that. And speaking of combinations of things, there's no reason why you can't think about how you can, you know, combine multiple things together 
and put them together to create some new thing where you could have that be your passion. So that way you don't have to sacrifice like one thing that you really enjoy to do this other thing. You can kind of combine them in a way uh, that allows you to do both of them. So like as an example, when I was back in college, I was like, you know, I was always interested in money and just like creating, you know, businesses. I didn't really care about like money, but I thought like it was a cool thing to provide a service for people, something like that. Uh, and then they like, kind of like the highest form that people really care about what you do is that they're like willing to pay you money for it. Like a lot of people can say, wow, that's like a great job you did. But when they actually give you money, that's like, wow, like they like really respect what you're doing and they're really excited to like promote and, and enjoy what you're talking about or whatever it is you're selling, that kind of thing. So I thought like, wow, that's like a really great way to combine like my interest in business, but also like my school had like a lack of you know, good parties. I went to a, a small liberal arts school in uh, Wisconsin, went to Lawrence University, which is actually a great school and I really enjoyed it. So I recommend it if you're thinking about a university, check them out. But anyway, so I went to Lawrence University in Wisconsin and uh, it was just kind of like a not very good party school. And it was just like coming off of a time where uh, I think like maybe like a student got badly injured or died because they were like drinking too much alcohol or something like that. And this was a common thing on college campuses where people were a little bit nervous about, hey, like, you know, we have to, you know, kind of take care and make sure the students don't do anything stupid, that kind of thing. So people weren't really having great parties. So I was like, hey, I want to like really start throwing some parties and have some great things that people have something to look forward to on the weekend after they've been, they've been studying hard all week. So I was able to like throw parties and actually make money doing it. So I knew like I was throwing a good party because people are actually willing to pay money to go to it, that kind of thing. So when you're thinking about like whatever it is you want to do, like think about the specific inputs that you want for the output you want to get. And like I'll talk about kind of inputs and outputs in a separate video because I think it's a really important way of thinking uh, and it's a, it's a great way of making decisions and figuring out how to do whatever it is you want to do. But basically, all you do is you think about the particular things you have to have in a situation or the things that you don't want and then kind of like list them all and then just put that into your mind and let it marinate. Let it marinate. Let it sit in your mind and that way you can think about what the things you want to do are but you don't have to try to like consciously decide what it is you want to do. So in my case, I was like, okay, like how can I do something where I can like make money and like figure out, like learn more about business, that kind of thing, but also provide like a valuable service and like, you know, have like help people have more parties or something like that. And it's like, I put both of those ideas into my head and like, oh, like why don't I just like start throwing parties for profit at school, that kind of thing. So if you think about those kinds of things, like especially if you're one of those people that maybe you don't have like one particular thing that like, you know, you want to do. Uh, and some people would call this their calling. So C-A-L-L-I-N-G to be called by something. It's like like gardening is calling me. It's like my calling. It just means your particular thing that you think you are put on this planet to pursue, whatever that happens to be. So if you don't have one specific thing uh, and, you know, you're kind of trying to figure out what's your passion or whatever it is you want to do, think about, you know, number one, a couple of different things you could do that like maybe you enjoy slightly like a little bit. Maybe it's not your like number one thing, but if you could combine those in a certain way. Uh, so how can I do something where it would allow me to do A, B, and C? And if you think about that, there's usually a way to figure out how to do something like that. So you don't have to sacrifice one thing, but you really have to think about something that you're actually enjoying doing. Because if you're not enjoying whatever it is you're doing, then, well, what's the point of living? What's the point of being here if you're not going to enjoy it? So whatever we think we're going to do, like, you know, whatever happens when we die, that kind of thing, you should definitely be enjoying the life you have now because this is like the guaranteed life. Like we know we're here. We know we have to do something for ourselves right now. So figure out something you want to enjoy and start doing it. Well, that's the end of this episode. If you have enjoyed this series and this, uh, this particular video, please do like it and share it with a couple of people and subscribe to the EnglishAnyone.com YouTube channel if you're not already a subscriber. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. To continue learning, click on the link in this video to download Speak English Naturally, our free guide to speaking and sounding like a native English speaker. The guide reveals the three most important kinds of conversational English you must learn if you want to sound native and will help you experience instant improvement in your fluency and speaking confidence. 
To download your free guide on a mobile device, click on the link in the upper right of this video. To download your free guide from a computer, click on the link in the lower right of this video. I look forward to seeing you in the guide.